Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is the last day of the month of April. Praise God. God has been faithful. No matter the challenge that this month brought, you know, I mean, this is one month that several things happened this month that is, is enough to make you wonder. But in all these, we we'll still count God faithful. Several special people this month, you know, departed this earth. And most of it, because all of them were kind of special. These are all people I knew and in one way or the other have been influenced or affected by these people. And even while we pray that God will comfort the families, especially, we also hold to this truth that God is faithful. He is faithful and you can never take that away from Him. Praise God. So we thank God for everything. It was an amazing month in truth. Praise God. So also let me make this announcement before going to the broadcast for today. Tonight by 12 midnight, we begin our fasting and prayer meeting. And that is going to end later on tomorrow we're going to be praying according to the watches i announced that yesterday now this meeting holds via zoom strictly on zoom so you can join us by um, using the address on the screen or by request we can send a link to you so that you can join this meeting i i tell you the truth these meetings are so important, especially as we enter into the month of May. Now, the month of May, there's something the Lord has laid in my heart to begin to talk about. And I think it's something we need to pay close attention to. See, as we approach the last days. Now, if you don't believe that we are in the last days and 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 begin to live your life in that manner, then I'll tell you the truth. You have decided to follow uh, real deceit in your life. Praise God. Now then, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We just bless you. We just thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace. All this you've made available for us. And you've made them available that we will take advantage of them and live the good life that you promised. You have given us life and we live it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Before we continue on today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Now, listen, everything today, today can be for you a day of miracle. If you stand on, your, on, on, on God's word and hold on to his truth and demand for it, every glory that ought to come to you this month, I mean the month of April, it can come today. It's, there is no such thing as too late with God. No such thing. So whatever you desire, position yourself to receive it and you will have it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Praise God. Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand from him heaven my daily bread is coming to me now in jesus name amen 
Praise God. See, when we say we demand from heaven, you know, sometimes we, we don't get it. When the Bible says, when Jesus said, your reward is in heaven. You know, the mentality we've had for many years is that when you get to heaven, you will receive your reward. No, the actual statement Jesus made is that your reward is from heaven. So we just have this idea that I will lay up treasures in heaven. So when you give, they are using it to build one big house for you in heaven. If you don't give much, and the house will not cross foundation stage. No, that's not what it means. Anything that Jesus referred to as laying up treasure in heaven, it's talking about the place where you save. It's like saying, don't put your money on this banks that we have here put it in this bank because it's safe in this bank that's what jesus was saying so when we make requests we're making requests from the abundance of what is in our accounts oh pastor Tubo, but i don't think i have much in my accounts because i don't understand um i've not been faithful in giving in tithing and in all that hey get faithful today see when you realize that instead of complaining and giving excuses hey why don't you just repent you know sometimes people just love excuses and when they give the excuses they are not giving it with the intention to repent they just they just like living in excuses repent i've not been faithful with tithing i've not been faithful why don't you just repent now, it's a different thing if you say, well, you know this tithing thing, me, I don't really, really believe. Now you have a problem. You do have a problem. See? But when you repent, it doesn't stop you. God does not calculate, okay, you, you only put 1,000 naira this year, this whole year. You've only given an offering of 1,000 naira. Mm. Your account is your account balance is too low. No, remember the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We are joint heirs. I know what it means to be joint as we own the assets together. We own everything together. We do. Now that's why my participation in giving reflects that. Okay, so whenever I obey God where giving is concerned, it's reflecting that I believe that I have an account in heaven. True. True. So that, that's why, you know, when, 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 when people say they don't believe in tithing, I really wonder. It shows, number one, that they don't really have a, a genuine walk with the Holy Spirit. Because if you do, if you have doubt concerning those things, you will go to Him. <laughs> oh, no, no. How can we go to Him when the thing is already clear in the world? How is it clear in the world? You know, I hear, I hear a lot of people say funny, funny things. And when you're listening to them, um, um, sorry to say, they sound so ignorant and unintelligent meanwhile they think they're intelligent but you you'll realize they are not they just take one thing and pursue it and blow it and you think they have so much knowledge on that thing but just one little pin will puncture everything they believe oh titan is not in the new testament did, did the new testament is it written anywhere in the new testament that we should not tight See, it's a funny thing, but have you ever asked yourself that question? They say, the tithing is nowhere in the New Testament, so we shouldn't tithe. Sorry. Did you see anywhere in the New Testament where it is stated that we should not tithe? No, it's not like that. So why would you think that something was, that was a clear tradition with them, with no specific word that they should stop and reason why they should stop someone says eh, eh, tithe was for the levites so 
because there are no Levites today. See, that's another problem. You are not of the tribe of Levite. Doesn't stop you from being a Levite. Ah, no, no, no. Hold on, listen. There is a reason God chose these people to be Levites. And that's in the context of the sons of Jacob that comprises the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, you see, we, we, we've been dealing with the, the wisdom of God's word now. So you find that in, in, in this setting, in this nation, in this, among all these tribes, God picked a people for him. Okay, so, and he says, these people, this is how their life would be. So someone says, because there are no Levites today, then there is no need to tithe. But they forget one thing. The tithe was not only for Levites. I'll come to you about the Levites again. The tithe was not only for Levites. The tithe was also for widows, for orphans, for strangers. So do you still have widows today? Do you have widows across the world today? Do you have orphans across the world today? Do you have strangers across the world today? Do you have them? So why would you just hold on to the fact that you think there are no Levites, which you lack understanding about, and you want to, by yourself, abolish tithe? Titan is of the law. Who said Titan is of the law? Titan came way before the law. The law was added to Titan to strengthen it. See? And two, even if Titan is of the law, did Jesus destroy the law? No, he clearly stated that he didn't come to destroy the law and the prophet, but he came to fulfill. What does it mean to fulfill? To fulfill means to show the reason for something. So if someone says you must tight, you don't understand the reason, but you just obey. Okay, ah, it's hard though, it's hard though, but ah, I have to obey because I don't want to offend God. Now, when it comes to the season of fulfillment, what happens in the season of fulfillment? The season of fulfillment show us, wow, now, I understand why it's important to tithe. Oh, what's going on? The law has been fulfilled. The fulfillment of the law is not one time event that now that the law is fulfilled, let's destroy it. Let's not do it again. No, sir. Fulfillment means we, we come into the place of clear understanding that right now we don't do it because we are complete hell to do it. We do it because we understand fully why we do it. So how do we fulfill the law of tithing? We come to this understanding that, hey, God wants to meet the need of all the, you know, he told Abraham, he says, true your seed, I'm going to bless, and that word bless means take care. I'm going to take care of all the families of the earth. I'll take care of all the families, all, all the families of the earth. He says, true your seed, I will take, why? Now God, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now what we're talking about, the wisdom of God's word. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If, if that is true, which it is, think, why would God now say, through one man's seed, he is going to take care of all the families of the earth? Why can't he just cause grains to grow everywhere? Why can't he just, and everybody will be taken care of? Why did he narrow it down to one man's seed? To be responsible for taking care of all the families of the earth. There's something God was working at. He, he's working at bringing the whole world to the place where they will understand that He is Lord indeed. And so when, when we teach on tithing, we teach you this, and that's the fulfillment. The fulfillment of it, you know, that's why sometimes you hear me bring up a challenge. I challenge any preacher who says we're not supposed to tithe to tell me clearly that the Holy Ghost told him. I challenge any preacher to tell me that. 
that the Holy Ghost told him that we are not supposed to tithe. I challenge them. They can't because the Holy Ghost will never tell you such a thing. Because for the Holy Ghost to say such, then he's going against the purpose of his word to Abraham. So God instituted the tithing to keep the covenant of Abraham. And say, ah, no, 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 abolish tithing. People can give whatever they give. You don't understand. You don't understand what covenant is. Two things. Now today's the last day of the month. I've got to share this with you. So that you retrace your steps just in case. Number one, I said two things. Number one, God was keeping, uh, uh, God was keeping his statutes. Okay, so in years to come, and that's why when you know I, I always make this statement when people say there is no tithing in the New Testament, I say it's a lie because we tithe and we are of the New Testament. Okay, and we 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 didn't copy it from the Jews. We received revelation consigning it. And we do it. So there is tithing in the New Testament because we are part of the New Testament. Okay, so clear that from your mind. But then you find out that one God was, God is, see, God is keeping his statutes on the earth. So he gave the command that of everything you get, you will take ten, one tenth out of it. So even if you don't know what you're doing, if you forget, why you're doing it but you're obeying it your children will come and ask you on the dad why do you always keep aside so now some of us grew up seeing our parents having this envelope that they put the right tight on it and they just keep it somewhere and and we wonder so why why do you have to do this then they explain and they teach us so that's an act that for posterity, for generations to come, you will remember to teach your children that God is our source. And because we believe God is our source, this is the work we do. Faith without works is dead. My taking out that 10%, which is a physical work that I do, is the work to show that I have faith in God for sustenance. I believe it is God that gives me the power to get wealth. I believe it. So because I believe it, this is my work of faith. My tithing is my work of faith. Number two, I said first to keep his status. Number two, to bring the blessing to all the families of the earth. And how is that going to happen? When we tithe by the word of the Holy Spirit. So because the money belongs to God, Tithing is not a free will offering, it's a command from the Lord. And because that money belongs to God, we must depend on Him to instruct us on what to do with His money. Now, this is where a lot of believers get it wrong. They don't, they don't give Him that right. They, they just take their tithe and they go to church and they give it to God. Oh, we, because they, they, in their mind, this is the house of God. So, and then they use that scripture in Malachi, bring your tithe into the storehouse. But truly, that's not what Malachi was talking about. That's another day's talk. But hear me, since the money belongs to God and God is alive today, and the way we know God is alive today, He speaks, then why don't we honor Him with His money? by giving him the right to tell us what to do with it. Now, when we do that, we, because cause he's the Lord, he knows where his money is needed. So you find out that he will begin to guide you and direct you to give the tithe to the Levites, the motherless, the strangers, the orphans. You see that? The widows also, you see that? So he, he, he begins to direct you. So those whom he has sent, they are Levites. You remember when Jesus was sending the disciples, I said, don't take anything. But when you go, wherever you go, they'll take care of you. How is that going to happen? Because he has commanded some people to meet you there. Now that's the way of the Lord till this day. If you don't do the work of God like the Lord wants it done, at the end of the day, your work will be zero. You're the only one that thinks you're working. But God doesn't have record that you're walking. Praise God. So let's retrace our steps. 
in this era of belief and actions and come to the place of the full knowledge of the truth. See, God is bringing us to that place of accuracy. And if you're a child of God, you must make up your mind. I'll submit my mind to the wisdom of God's word. And I'll begin to walk according. See, that's what I've shared now. What I just shared with you is so that you walk according to the truth concerning tithe. Not just taking the tithe to give. Now you understand what you are doing. And the Spirit of God guiding you. And you're bringing the blessing to every part, every place, every person that God intends for that blessing to get to. Praise God. My time is up. Praise God. And this is the last broadcast for the month of April. Remember, tonight by 12 midnight, we're having our prayer and fasting meeting. So join us and you will surely be blessed. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow, which is next month. Bye.